Hello. Today I'm going to talk about Cain and Abel and what a blemished offering is. After God had cast Adam and Eve out of the garden, Eve bore two sons. The first was Cain and the second was Abel. Abel became the keeper of flocks and Cain became the tiller of the soil. In the book of Genesis, chapter 4 of the N.A.B. Bible, which is the only Bible that I ever use, it reads, In the course of time, Cain brought an offering to the Lord from the fruit of the soil, while Abel, for his part, brought one of the best firstlings from his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering he did not. Cain greatly resented this and was crestfallen. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you so resentful and crestfallen? If you do well, you can hold up your head. But if not, sin is a demon lurking at the door. His urge is towards you, yet you can still be his master. There's a whole bunch of different things all going on here at the same time in just those few lines. There are two different brothers with two completely different spiritual attitudes towards God. One was respectfully, spiritually minded, while the other was only earthly minded. You know, light versus darkness, right versus wrong, good versus evil, spiritual integrity versus earthly desires earthly influences, earthly thinking. God is of the spirit, Satan is of the earth. It's just that simple. Life is always this same struggle over and over, forever, for everybody. That's how we decide for ourselves which side we're really on. We make that decision, not God, by our actions and what we do. Which side are you on? You know, both brothers wanted blessings from God. Both knew how to present their requests to him. But only one sacrifice was acceptable, while the other one was not. That's why God said to Cain, If you do well, you can hold up your head. So God came back to Cain and was offering to accept his sacrifice, but it had to be a well one instead of an unwell one. It is in the heart of the giver that determines the quality of the sacrifice. It is the heart of the giver that determines the quality of the sacrifice. God searches for the spiritual integrity of the giver, not just the earthly value of the sacrifice itself. Cain just doesn't get it that his spiritual soul, his spiritual integrity has to match the value of the earthly offering. He just doesn't get it.
there's also direct communication going on between God and the two brothers. Each one hears God's tiny whisper coming from deep within their soul, or they wouldn't even know that they could even make offerings to God. The Bible wasn't even written back in those days. There was no. All communications with the Lord was either direct, as in this case, or through an intermediary, such as a prophet, which is not the case here. Both were instructed properly by God's whisper, and afterwards there is much direct and real-time communication between Cain and God, which I encourage you to read for yourself. It reads that they do speak freely between each other and in real time. Think about it. There's also revelations as to what is right and wrong as God speaks to Cain, as proclaimed by God himself in his words, now recorded in the Bible, for all of us to learn from too. Read these words. They're there for a reason. God himself is explaining what he considers to be right from wrong, and since he's the one who determines if we get into heaven or not, it'd be a good idea to listen to him, don't you think? I mean, if you want to get into heaven, it's up to you. One of the purposes of this incident being recorded in the Bible is also to give instruction on the right way to make an offering to God and the wrong way to make an offering to God. And I'm going to sum it up right here and now in one word. Attitude. What you are spiritually feeling inside of yourself for real while you make the offering. An offering that doesn't cost you anything isn't worth much in God's eyes, which is what Cain did. But an offering you'd really rather not make, but would rather keep for yourself, but you offer it to God anyway, you know, you struggle to make this sacrifice, this offering to God, proves to God the sincerity of your soul. It proves to God the integrity of your spiritual attitude. This is what he's really looking for. The sincerity of your soul. The integrity of all of us reaching out to him. And all of us, the trust we put in him. Above and beyond worldly influences. See, it all started with Adam and Eve. Their failure to trust in God's word, their failure to constantly prove it with acts of obedience to God's word, their constant acts of obedience by not eating the apple would have been the perfect sacrifice God was looking for. That's why there had to be temptation. There had to be temptation to make their sacrifice cost something. But they weren't supposed to fail. See? When God told Adam and Eve, hey, don't eat the apple, and there was no serpent to test them, it was an act of obedience, but it was free because there was no other option. You know? They didn't have to work at it. Once the serpent came and started to test them and tempt them, all of a sudden, 
Things got edgy. Things got sweaty inside of them. Things got nervous. They started thinking for themselves. They had to decide of free will to be obedient to God's word or to act on their own, which is the opposite of God's word. People are still doing this to this very day, this very minute, all around the whole world around us. Gee, Adam and Eve messed it up. People are still messing it up the exact same way every single minute of the day, every place in the world. Just don't you try to be one of them. Adam and Eve messed up human existence by not being obedient to God's word. And people have been keeping this up ever since. When you compare what's written about Abel's sacrifice, it reads, In the course of time, Cain brought an offering to the Lord from the fruit of the soil, while Abel, for his part, brought one of the best firstlings from his flock. See the difference in attitude? Notice it took time to mention that Abel brought one of the best, best firstlings from his flock. It doesn't say the same thing about Cain. Cain did not bring the best of his first produce to God because he was clearly more worldly minded than his brother Abel, who was more spiritually minded. Abel put God first and he, Cain put his own earthly interests first. So he made an offering that didn't cost him much and it's not worth much in God's eyes. But an offering that you'd really rather not give an offering that is edgy, that makes you sweat, that makes you think about it, that causes you struggle on the inside, you wrestle with yourself, and you make that offering to God anyway, proves to God the sincerity of your soul. That's what he's really looking for. The sincerity of your soul. The integrity. The sincerity of your integrity. The sincerity of your integrity. That's what he's looking for. In Exodus chapter 23 verse 20 it reads. See, I am sending an angel before you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place I have prepared. Be attentive to him and heed his voice. Do not rebel against him, for he will not forgive your sin. My authority resides in him. If you heed his voice and carry out all I tell you, I will be an enemy to your enemies and a foe to your foes. Start making sacrifices to God and start watching him become an enemy to your enemies and a foe to your foes. I don't want anybody to take my word for anything. What I want is for all of you to find out for yourself if these words are true or not. Take just a moment right now and ask God what he would accept from you in order that he might then give you a blessing. Test me on this. I've done it many times. And I continue to do it. With integrity, ask God what he might accept from you. And whatever his tiny whisper from deep inside your soul tells you to do, then do it. Do an act of obedience to his word. He might only ask you to say a prayer, and that's it. Do it. 
It might also be just a small, simple act of obedience somewhere or somehow. He might ask you to go somewhere and do something. Or he might ask you to go to somebody and tell them his words. Not your words. You don't get to change God's words because you think it'll sound better the way you say it. Nope. If God's words are spoken to you in a certain way, you repeat them back exactly without changing them. That's obedience. He might, when you ask God what to do for a sacrifice, a blessing from him, he might ask you to give him money. Donate money to this charity or that charity. Or go out in your backyard and burn it. Whatever he tells you to do. Don't change anything. Obedience. You know what Adam and Eve didn't do? Now it's your turn. Now it's your chance to fix what Adam and Eve messed up. By when you hear his word, you now get to be a chance to be obedient. Exactly without changing anything. If God asks you for a sacrifice of money, what he's really asking you to do, he wants to see you throw down money, which is the false god of this worth, the Balaam, the Baal, the Astoreth pole, the false god, the Dagon, false god of this world money another name for the devil take the devil take money and throw down that false god he wants to see you do it he's asking you for a reason he knows it's going to be edgy he knows it's going to make you sweat on the inside he knows this is a test does he need your money Anybody who can create a galaxy can create all the money they ever want. He's not looking for money. He's looking to see what you are going to do in this test. Your spiritual integrity. If God does ask you to throw down the false god of this earth, which is money, and you don't have the money to make that sacrifice, which has happened to me many, many, many times. You get to ask God to provide the money for you for the sacrifice. Trust me. This happened to me just three weeks ago. When money comes to you through his own means and through his own ways don't eat those seeds that he gives you for planting don't oh money showed up I'm gonna spend it on me no don't eat the seeds that he's giving you for planting if you asked him to provide money for your sacrifice because you don't have it and the money comes to you through whatever means he gives it to you plant those give those donate those Burn them, whatever, whatever you already know you're supposed to do with it. Send it to whoever you're supposed to send it to. God's got a plan. Don't eat the seeds that he gives you for planting. If what he gives you is not the full amount to make your sacrifice, then just keep on offering with what you have and what he does give you as you go along. Even if it takes months. God has a plan. He's working with you. You're developing training. You're developing a relationship that works. Think about that. In time, in God's own time, you will receive the blessing. 
in accordance with your acceptable spiritual attitude. I'm telling you the truth. You passed the test. Join with me in this prayer. Dear God, you are the creator of all the earth. Nothing is too hard for you to do. Please guide us and teach us how to make acceptable sacrifices so that you may then bless us. And let us learn how to keep on doing this all the days of our lives. Amen.